Dear friends, it's my pleasure to address the 2022 Climate Action Week in China. Let me just highlight the two interconnected crises we are facing, one exacerbating the other, climate change and nature loss. Our atmosphere is already 1.2 degrees Celsius hotter than pre-industrial times, and it is unequivocal that the vast majority of such temperature increase is due to human impacts. We are fast approaching the 1.5 degrees limit set by scientific community. That is going to be almost the red line, the danger zone that we don't want to trespass, because we know that trespassing the line will exacerbate extreme weather events, and we are already all living too frequently the consequences of global warming today. In summer 2022, China was hit by its most severe heat wave in six decades for more than 70 days straight. Brutal heat, heat wave ravaged much of the country with sustained temperatures of more than 40 degrees. It affected more than 900 million people. Uh, and, and similarly, that happened across all the Northern Hemisphere, in Europe, in North America. So climate change and its impact, it's here and now already. On the other hand, nature is in crisis too. One million of species are on the brink of extinction. We've seen a 69%, over two thirds decline of global wildlife population is less than 50 years. We lost half of the forest, half of the coral reefs, 80% of the wetlands of the world. And this is not just affecting biodiversity and the functioning of the natural world. It's also affecting climate too, because <clears throat> it is affecting nature's ability to buffer climate change to mitigate climate change. Think, for example, uh, uh, at the function that the ocean plays uh, in absorbing up to 40% of our CO2 emissions annually. But also think about the uh, greenhouse gases, the CO2 released by in the atmosphere by destroying nature. Think about forest fires or intensive agriculture that releases carbon stored in the soil. Science on uh, uh, climate is very clear. And a very clear goal, net zero emissions by 2050, that requires a decarbonization of our society and economy. Uh, we are moving in that direction, but we need to accelerate and don't deviate from this goal. Uh, in fact, much more has to be done. The world is still heading towards two to three degrees of global warming, which will be catastrophic for all life on earth and for our own civilization. This November uh, in Egypt, there will be a UN conference on, on climate. And, uh, and this is the opportunity to uh, increase the commitment uh, and make sure that uh, we stay on course. In fact, we accelerate towards the net zero emissions uh, by 2050 goal. On nature, we don't have such clarity. We need a similar clarity. And we have the opportunity uh, to agree on a similar global goal. The window for action on nature is also closing rapidly. We are destroying ecosystems at the accelerating rate, and, and that has to stop. And so rever halt and reverse nature loss by 2030 to achieve a nature positive goal, a net positive uh, result for nature, uh, it's fundamental to protect ecosystems and the biological uh, systems of the world, uh, but also to contribute to climate change. Uh, we want a nature positive goal because net zero for already, but also nature can come back, can recover. And so we want nature positive. to disappear at unprecedented rates. Uh, the world oceans, forests, wetlands, soils are critical carbon sinks, absorbing half, together half of the carbon emission we emit. And so reducing our
abroad. So, dear friends, we are already transitioning to a sustainable future, but uh, scale and the speed of that transition will determine success or failure in building a safe future for humanity and all life on Earth, as we know it. The uh, price is big, the challenge is huge, but it is not only possible, it is necessary. And so, time to act is now. Thank you for having me.